we're live. Shit. <laughs> I didn't realize that it switched over because I was too busy on making sure Max was I was not like, eating. I know. I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> he knew. He was ready. No one else was ready because XSplit does what it wants. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quarter Swords. Uh, week 24, I think. We're almost to 25. That is correct. Mm -hmm. 24 is the number immediately before 25. Yeah, 25 is a lot of episodes. It, you know, we kill mm -hmm. shows at 50, so... I was going to say, it's half a swan song, so... Yeah. We, it, region region we, middle age. It's weird, because it doesn't feel like half a swan song. By half a it's swan song, I was like, man, this is, a, this is fucking half a swan song. This is a long show. <laughs> it's because we keep breaking it up, right? Like, <clears throat> Court of Swords isn't, isn't one 25-episode long show. It's like four shorter shows or five shorter shows so that's true that's yeah true. i think that's why it feels because like, i was thinking about that too i was like wow this is like it's like getting up there in episodes but it's just because we break it up so much yeah maybe so yeah maybe, maybe you're right i think so. uh for those that missed the news last week on march 7th we'll be adding a guest and now it's time to quiz the people on the show adam who's that guest her name is morgan webb okay I don't. I can't I quiz Max or Dan. You've talked to her a bunch about her I, character. I, just, I, I know. So I know all cheating. kinds. I know all kinds of shit about her character and and some plans we got. We got plans. We got plans maybe next week we'll reveal the race of the character, and then maybe the week after that we'll reveal the class of the character, and then I think maybe <laughs> she's on the show then. Maybe. Yeah. Soon. Maybe in two or three weeks. Maybe four weeks. I don't know. I don't know how long it is, but March 7th is when we'll be uh, having... It's exactly, a month. it's exactly a month from today. Oh, shit. Today's the 7th. You're right. <laughs> Man, Adam's on top of it today. The rest of us just... <laughs> two hours earlier is just fucking everything up. It just doesn't make any <laughs> yeah. sense whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense. This is, this is normal stream start time for me, so I'm like, I'm good. I'm oh, ready you're to good? Go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, uh, I'm on about five hours. It... The thing oh. that sucks about Netflix. Let's talk about binging Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our usual Netflix hour. The thing that sucks about Netflix is you, for whatever reason, right around the time that you should probably go to sleep, a good episode starts in the binge. And then the president's daughter gets kidnapped in fucking this episode. And you're like, well, shit, I can't go to sleep knowing that Zoe's in trouble. I got to see what happens. And then they fucking, he resigns and a goddamn Republican comes into office. And you're like, well, shit, I got to see what happens now with a Republican in office. And then the and new you know, season Buffy, starts. Buffy is not at all like I remember. It's different as shit. Yeah. yeah then the there's... new season starts and you're just like, well, fuck. It's 6, it's 7.30. I should go sleep. So <laughs> yeah. that's when I went to sleep at 7.30. They know what they're doing when they have the auto start of the episodes. It's like because you have like a fine window of like twenty seconds or so. Yeah. And if you're if you're doing something or you're like you're you're kind of taking in what happened last episode, that takes longer than twenty seconds, and they know that. Yeah. And then the next one starts, and you're like, well, fuck. I mean, it's have already. You noticed, have you noticed they've changed it? They've changed that like for a lot of the newer shows. Like I noticed this with the OA. They've changed the overlap thing, so it's not like here's the credits. We're starting the new episode. It's just one screen yeah. and a tiny little red thing at the bottom is like yeah. next episode yep. in three. Two. Well, you're, you're watching it. Oh no! What are you gonna oh, do? Oh, really? It's that fast? <laughs> Shit. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they. <clears throat> I didn't know that. For uh, for West Wing, it's like some fucking crazy <clears throat> dramatic thing happens at the end of the episode, and then it's like the stinger music. And then the end credits music happens, and it's like real fucking happy and shit and presidential. Then you got to wait twenty seconds, but the song's great, so you don't mind. You just sit there and wait because you don't want to reach over and find the yeah. remote to hit fucking next episode. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so on, say on average. Ask. I was just going to say, on average, before we move on from the, the music thing, how many episodes into a show do you have to get before you skip the opening credits? I, I never skip the opening credits of West yes. Wing because it's the best. You yeah, cannot I like it too. I fucking... never I never skip the opening. Even if I've heard the theme song a hundred times, I'm like, no, it's part yeah. of the episode. Yeah. You've got to watch. Yeah. It warms you up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Dan, what were we going to say? Sorry, Dan. I was saying um, I, I hate when um, it's like, are you still watching? Like, I'm like, God damn yeah. it. Now I, got, now I have <laughs> yeah. to It did that to me the other night. You I got know? so upset. I got yeah. so upset. Yeah. I was on like episode seven of the binge or something like that. So I well, think they do that. So people don't like blow all their internet. Right. So you don't like fall asleep yeah. watching something that just plays all night. That's true. Yeah. I, I think I they increased. I think they increased that thing. The, the amount of episodes or whatever it, it, it is before it asks you that. 
because I remember it used to be earlier because sometimes I'll put on like, uh, I don't know, like nature documentaries or like episodes of something uh, for Malcolm when I leave just because it's like noise in the background just so it seems like someone's there. And I came back the other day and it was like, oh, shit, this is still on. (laughs) (laughs) Normally I would have, you know, stopped by then. But yeah, I'm the same way, though. I I watch the opening (laughs) credits and for most things. I think it actually depends. And I, I have no basis for this, but I think it depends on the show, Max. It might. It might. Because yeah, like, you, I was thinking about that too. We were. I was watching Buffy the other day, and it was <laughs> three episodes. And I'm then it asked right. if you continue watching, but the remote was never touched or anything in between those three episodes, because I fell asleep, and it just kept playing. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe if somehow Netflix can fucking detect if you're using the controller or some shit during that time. I don't know how that would be possible. Well, the, or maybe it's just by episode, like it, like after three episodes, and then if the show's longer, it seems like it's not actually skipping, or it's it's going through more episodes than yeah, maybe than might. I don't know. I have no actual. I've done no no science. I've done no like I actual either. research behind this. Yeah, I haven't either. I haven't either. Uh, Dan, what have you been binging on Netflix? How you been? You've been uh, what what snow themed shows have you been watching? Yeah, I got snowed <laughs> in yesterday because apparently like. When C- Seattle rarely ever gets snow, and when it gets snow, the city shuts down because yeah. they, yeah. they just don't know how to deal with it. Um, so yeah, I was snowed in yesterday. They finally plowed the street um, late last night. Um, no salt though, which I was like, "What? That doesn't really help." But uh, I, I watched uh, Finding Dory yesterday. Hey, how was that? It was pretty good. Yeah, it, it was. It was. <laughs> it was adorable. My favorite part was the uh, the seals that, you know, telling Gerald to get off the damn rock. Have you guys seen it? No, I've I not haven't watched no. Finding Dory. Otherwise, yet. I would be it, like, yeah. It, yeah, it, it just hit Netflix, it's, and it's, it's really good. It's on Netflix. I just well, saw that it was I'm on Netflix. Watch, if you like Finding Nemo, tonight. you'll like Finding Dory. Yeah. Civil War is also on uh, Netflix. I knew that. Yeah, I watched that day one multiple times. That's yeah, crazy. I, yeah, yeah, yeah no, I saw it on Netflix, and I also saw Finding Dory. I'm like, oh, way to go, Netflix. <laughs> like, It seems a bit early to be on Netflix, but I guess. Dan, I got to ask. I got to ask the important question before we get to Black Mirror. Is Finding Dory in 4K? <laughs> I I think it is. I'm pretty sure, because Pixar usually goes up really high. But it, it's all it's animated, so I'm sure that it will scale easily. Since that's true, animation. Okay. I was gonna say from Pixar, there's no reason uh, it wouldn't be in 4K. Yeah. Well, sometimes Netflix doesn't get 4K movies unless it's their own content. So yeah it's, it's wishy-washy uh what you, you said you started watching black mirror though you liking that yeah i started, started watching black mirror yeah I, I watched uh first two episodes of season one and then i watched the first episode of season three and they're all really good i, I like yeah. them uh they're all they have they're full of moments where you're just like oh come on but it's i, I like them they're entertaining I, I feel like i feel like black mirror is what like, it, it really depends. People's opinion of Black Mirror really depends on whether they're familiar with uh, the Twilight Zone at all. Mm. Because it's it's really the reincarnation of the Twilight Zone. In the same way in that some episodes you're like, oh, yeah, interesting. And other episodes you're like, seriously? Like, that's, this is what this is about? <laughs> that's like, the one uh, with self-contained stories per episode, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's a different cast every episode. The first one was about the president and the pig. Uh, prime the minister. Prime, the prime, yeah. prime minister. minister. Yeah, you know what I mean. Prime minister and the pig. Yeah, okay, got it. I watched a few episodes of that, yeah. I watched yeah. an episode of it uh, recently that I actually, there was no, at no point in the whole episode did I like roll my eyes and go, okay, guys, you're scared of Facebook. Uh, it was called uh, San Junipero. I think it's in season three. It's really good. It's like my favorite episode of the whole show so far. So when you get there, <laughs> tell me and we'll, we'll talk about that episode. But there, there are lots that are like, like you said, kind of like, eh, yeah. okay. But for the most part, it's, it's an interesting show. It's doing something that I don't think any other show is doing, which is <laughs> cool. I like how there's always like a message about real life stuff and things that are happening in real life. Like the, the one where people give you everyone ratings and th- that one is like based on like how we live our lives. Like I'm not, like, I felt like I go through Netflix. And I'm like, I don't want to watch that movie. It's a four. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can watch a four when I watch a five. Apparently you know? there's an app that'll hide the ratings, the credits and the text <laughs> of the next episode on Netflix on uh oh really yeah so like if, if you finish an episode it won't tell you the little dialogue description of the next episode that spoils what's in it they spoil some of that like those those yeah. little mini descriptions yeah. they don't give a fuck they'll tell you like straight up spoilers yeah be like being that such and such found this now they're doing this I'm like what the fuck like, yep. i, I, I knew like, zoe's gonna be bad. taken before the episode even started 
So then when the I fucking love... weird music star is like, well, she's getting taken. <laughs> Get Liam Neeson on the phone. I love watching them try. I love watching them try to not spoil stuff. Like Mad Men uh, is, has really good ones. These where it's like Joan has a problem. Pete doesn't know what to do with his life. Like, okay, great, thanks. That's not Don. Someone smokes cigarettes and drinks alcohol. Exactly. You know. Racism happens. Do they have the entire uh, Mad uh, Mad Men show? Like, even the yes. season finale? Okay, I might go yeah. back and watch this or the series finale. I might go back and mm-hmm. watch that because it's really. Yeah, good, I'm so. in the part. I'm in the part where everybody has sideburns now. And it's great. Nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those are some of the more interesting episodes, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, Max, what about you? Besides the nature shows, what have you been binging? Uh, I've actually been rewatching uh, Warehouse 13, which is, I don't know if it's a show that, that a anybody here's watched. Show? That's a sci fi show. Yeah. It was like 2009 or so. Um, yeah. I kind of just randomly remember that that was a show that existed and I really liked it. A while back, I think I didn't watch all the way through the, the the latest. I say the latest season. I don't remember the last one. It only has five seasons. But um, I wanted to show it to Amanda, and uh, we've been rewatching that. And actually, the same thing happened last night because we were finishing up the the first season. Um, and we got last night when we started watching. It was like the last episode, and I didn't realize it was the last episode. And I forgot it ended on like a really big cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. And then immediately after we finished watching it, she's like, "What? No, we we got we got to watch the next one." Like it's over. so. We kept, we kept watching for at least only one more episode. We were pretty good about it. But, yeah, I've been watching that show. If you guys don't know what that show is, it's pretty cool. Basically, it's like a big warehouse that the government controls, that they hire a Secret Service, a branch of the Secret Service, to go and find these artifacts that have, like, kind of mystical or mysterious, like, po- powerful properties. Mm-hmm. And they have to go investigate yeah. it and find the artifact, whatever it might be. And then, like, say, like, Edgar Allan Poe's, like, pen and, and, and notebook or, like, a bloodstone from like ancient like Incan or like Aztec things that like makes people go crazy, stuff like that. And then they neutralize it, bring it back to the warehouse. And so there's this just giant warehouse in South Dakota built in the side of a mountain that has all this crazy shit in it. It's really cool. It's kind of like more of like, it's got a little bit of cheese because it's a product of its time. Like in 2009, it didn't have a huge budget. So some of the CG is like a little like, "Mm, that wide shot of this warehouse looks kind of. (laughs) It's also like a sci-fi. When I say sci-fi, I don't mean the theme. I mean, that's the company that made it. That's the TV that made it. Um, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the what what it's now spelled is it Sci-fi. now spelled Syfy the S S Y F Y Syfy I think yeah yeah anyways but it's a good show I'd recommend it to anybody who's like into that kind of kind of nerdy especially if you got like a little historical um, side to you I'm kind of like a history buff not not that I like know a shit ton of history stuff but I like that kind of stuff and interject that with a little bit of like nerdy kind of uh, interesting stuff like you know from from people from the past and stuff and it's pretty cool i don't know it's neato yeah. check it out if you want to or at least try the first episode or something and see if you like it check it out if you really liked the end of indiana jones yeah. and the raiders of the lost ark <laughs> pretty much if that yeah. was your part if that was your favorite part of indiana jones we got a yeah. show for you pretty much yeah uh yeah. adam did i already ask what you've been binging no what have you been binging i haven't had time to binge anything but i have i've been watching some movies what i watched been watching I watched, uh, I've been, so I've been watching movies with people who have not seen movies that I've seen a million times and it's really fun to take a movie, especially a bad movie and watch it with someone who hasn't seen it. I watched, uh, Conan, Conan the Barbarian last night. <laughs> I don't think Ooh. I've ever actually sat down and watched that entire movie from start to finish. It's, uh, it's something else. So there are some parts of it that are good, but I forgot how little anyone actually talks in that movie. They just there's like a lot there's of so much and, yeah. silence and grunting. Yeah, yeah, a lot of grunting. And well, he's a barbarian. It's in the title. No, but it's not just him. It's everyone in the movie communicates with like grunting and pushing. Um, yeah. But there's, I mean, there's some good parts. It's good. Thulsa Doom rules. He's the best. James Earl Jones is great, even though he's a terrible haircut. Um, yeah. And we watched Hackers. I watched Hackers again recently. Wow, it's a good which, movie. An amazing movie. Yep. encapsulates everything I love about the 90s. Um, and I watched, a, I watched a Japanese movie recently that I hadn't seen since I was a teenager called uh, Tampopo, which is about a, a woman who is... It's like a, co- a weird food comedy from the 80s about a woman who's opening a, ra- a ramen restaurant and this weird like trucker cowboy guy who like helps her out. It's super weird and is kind of like a Japanese Monty Python in a lot of ways, which is really oh. surreal. Um, yeah, it's called Tampopo. It's really good. Sounds a little bit like a K-drama. Uh, that's Ooh, racist. Do we need to call? Um, that is racist, though. Actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, but do we need to call Sean and get some K drama updates? He's actually uh, in Hawaii it's... today. That asshole. So I can't call him. They just have. Yeah. What is he doing in Hawaii? 
They're on vacation. Oh, man. Yeah, that whole crew. Was in Hawaii. They went up to us, Max. We went to Colorado. They went to Hawaii. Okay. Well, I yeah, I guess okay. Well, <laughs> I like processed it. I'm like, well, maybe. Meh. I don't know. I don't know if they one up us. They just went to another <laughs> place that just different. It's a different climate. If you favor like more warmer climates, I guess yeah, then Hawaii's better. But I had a fun time in Colorado. I don't know. Did you, did you have fun? Yeah. yeah no, I. It was fun. <laughs> I'm not saying it wasn't fun. What I'm just saying. I think Hawaii is maybe a little bit of a one up compared to Colorado. Maybe, yeah, maybe. There's probably I mean so there's a lot the, more to do, what, I suppose. What's the next what's the next step? Is Hawaii the top of the continental United States like pillar or can can you go somewhere better in America? I vacation? think if you go to Alaska, it might be better than Hawaii. If you go to like an Alaskan cruise or something like that, I think that might be better. Alaska is great. It's scenic as fuck. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Especially a cruise. I'd imagine that you just see all sorts of crazy awesome yeah. you know, scenic views. I mean, maybe we can maybe we could knock Hawaii down a peg and just say there's a lot of meth in Hawaii. I've watched TV. All right, just tons of meth. Hawaii Five O. You might yeah. go to Hawaii and just become a meth addict. You don't know. Hawaii would be great if it weren't for the Five O. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> I stumbled upon that show the other day when I was in a hotel. I that show's really bad. How is that show still on air? It's so <laughs> awful. I don't understand it at all. That's and that's my review of. Hawaii Five O, the new show. <laughs> why does it exist? Yeah, why does it exist? I don't get it. I don't yep. know. I'm yeah, trying to think of know. other places on in the U.S. that would be good to visit. But. I feel. I mean, I feel like if you're going for like <clears throat> classic vacation, Hawaii is the thing because it's still part of America, but you get to leave and go on a long flight and be somewhere like climate wise it's pretty different from most of america i mean it depends it depends too on why you're going like i think there are a lot of people who'd be like yeah fort lauderdale like you know mm. I, I i think that like new york is probably the best place to go oh. to do cool shit fuck new right? york man that place is see, so ridiculous i've never been before i would totally be don't go to new york. New, you might like new york i don't know it's i'm not, from chicago it's not big... which is a big city apparently new york is dirtier so i don't know from what i've been told maybe it's different now a lot of New York smells like pee. Which yeah, but a lot like. of San Francisco just smells like pee. Like if you go, yeah, right it's kind of any major city, yeah, city yeah, really. If you, you just walk right through place, a certain area, pee is kind of ever ever existing. I'm just, it's I'm just wherever just, you go, and yeah. that, isn't that just a beautiful thing? It just smells the same wherever you go. Yeah. Brings I mean, all not, of us together. It's not actually true, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vancouver uh, doesn't I mean, have just, piss stained streets, is what Adam's saying. That's what that's he's very true. He's throwing the gauntlet down. So it doesn't. It doesn't, but you couldn't, you can't, it's, I'm like in the same position as Dan right now. Like Vancouver is snowed the fuck in. I tried to drive to get dinner yesterday. I got three blocks and was like, nope, fuck it. Just parked my car and left and walked. Cause you can't, I can't, you can't go anywhere. I feel your pain, Dan. Mm -hmm. I feel it. The Pacific Northwest yeah. does not know how to handle this shit, but it's nice. Yeah. I like all the snow and nothing yeah, smells like, like tea. I'm it pretty sure like if it snowed yeah. as much as it just did in Seattle, Texas would actually just not exist. They just wipe it off the map and say goodbye. <laughs> they just Texas. quit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're done. I'm out. You're out of here. <laughs> yeah. They would succeed from the union and just become barbarians and just scavenge yeah. for food. I mean, if, uh, the thing with San Antonio is the two times that it snowed, literally everything in the city shuts down. Like, you cannot go to the grocery store. People don't go work at gas stations. You just can't do anything. It just shuts down. Uh, even when, when there's ice on the road, like, school is canceled for a week because there's ice on the road. So... I can't imagine large amounts of snow here. It would just, everyone would be fucked up. It'd just be a bad time. So yeah, yeah. Texas I'd go to New York just just for the main reason that I, <laughs> I like visiting. <laughs> I am, yeah. No, <laughs> we're going back to New York. <laughs> no, I'll, real quick, I'm just saying the the reason why I'd go to New York, regardless of like you know whether or not it's super cool or whatever your opinion is of it, if it's shitty or good. So I like just visiting a lot of the major cities that we have, and that's one of the ones that I haven't hit that's like major. And I'm from Chicago, so I'd like to compare it to Chicago just to see how it's different or similar. And also see what their pizza is like. You know, it's probably pretty good. Apparently it's like the water in New York that's uh that's supposed to make the dough taste as good as it does, and that's like a big part of why people say in New York pizza tastes as good as it does. Not, uh, little with, fun factoid. Get, Same with uh, bagels. You gotta get a bagel too. Right? It's the yeah, pee. New it's the a urine. Good. It's that a filters good, down it's to the water table. City. Yeah, it's a good food city. That's all I did when I was there. I just like, went to museums and ate food. Yeah, the favorite. I was in New York way too much because when I worked at MLG, that's where their offices are. So I would go there about once a month. But mm. my favorite part about New York was, and I forget the name of the place. I wish I could remember it. Uh, there was a deli right around the corner of uh, the MLG offices down the way, 
Um, it was open 24 hours, but you could go in there and just get whatever you wanted. And they would just make it right in front of you, no matter what time of day it is. And they'd fucking heat it, warm it up. But yeah. when he, like my idea of a, my stupid, dumb Texas brain idea of a deli, <laughs> it's like, Hey, let's go subway. No, subways right. are no. not yeah. delis. No, 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 no. <laughs> subways are not delis whatsoever. So you go to this place and uh, you get like, yeah, let me just get a, uh, let me just get a ham and cheese on a bread roll. And then you get this monstrosity that's like this fucking big for like five yeah. bucks. It has like that much meat in it. Mm -hmm. They put mayonnaise on there for a real white man sandwich. It was great. It was great stuff. Just mayo, cheese, and bread and meat. And that's it. If you go to a proper deli, it's literally just like all the, the it's basic ingredients, but it's all like really good ingredients that yeah. just makes everything taste yeah, like amazing. Yeah, they got the boar's head meat there. It's great. It's good stuff. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a really good deli. Yeah. Uh, and that place is open 24 hours, so I, I ate there <laughs> way too often. And then there was also a Chinese place that was like on the way to the deli in the same corner uh, or the same block. We'd go there all the time. It was super expensive, but it was really good. Yeah. Anyways, I, the food there was great. That's what I'm getting at. So if you go there, Max, get ready to eat a lot. Yeah, I would imagine. I've, yeah. heard, I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. And you can also get uh, 99 cents pizzas just everywhere. Fucking yeah, I, I know that's, that's the thing. Dollar slice, dollar slice pizza. The deli's everywhere. just selling pizza in the corner. It doesn't make any sense, but like, hey, you want a slice? We got a slice, and you get a slice. And it's, it's like a Radio Shack. They also just have pizza there. They probably do. <laughs> yeah, probably I mean, I'm do. pretty sure that's all Radio Shack sells now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they got to do something. You know, it's a it's a rough economy out there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. It's true. All right, let's play uh, some D and D two hours earlier. Let's see if our brains work this early in the afternoon. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last the last time that we played, uh, y'all had your your fortunes read uh, in preparation for uh, whatever adventure you were about to undertake. Yep. Um, but you're you're caught in a bit of a situation, right? Because there's this there's this gang, and they've they've given you a temporary reprieve from hassling you. But there's this gang in town in the the lower part of the monastery town that uh, has been giving you a hard time on account of your living in the home of someone who formerly owed them a great deal of money and then skipped town. Uh, the sister of the blacksmith who uh, rented you or sold you the place uh, in the first place. So currently, uh, you have a uh, an apartment above a, a tea shop in a moderate to bad part of town, uh, in a monastery town on the southern border of the Court of Coins, uh, it currently has no furniture in it. There's some sleeping bags in a corner. Uh, one of you sleeps on the balcony. And, uh, yeah, and there's there's a, a gang of devil worshippers uh, out there who think that they owe you some money. And the mandate here was pay up or we take it out of the blacksmith. And if the blacksmith gets hit, that means no plate armor for you. And the deposit that you paid her probably will get taken away by gangsters. Here's the thing. Why don't we just bunk up with the, the blacksmith and then we know if they're coming after her and then bada bing bada boom done. She's fine. We get our armor and then we just leave. Mm -hmm. But we tell her that we'll constantly watch over her. Well, have you see we what I'm saying? The, have we spoken with the blacksmith since we got back? Not since. No. You you spoke to her husband. Remember, he, he took you to the, That's um, right. the, bath the house. shrine of the lovers. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hung out and talked to you about. Uh, she could be dead already. About the deal. Well, they don't want to kill her, right? That's not that's not profitable. Um, She's the thing was is that these these guys aren't uh, you know they're not desperate killers. They they just run some rackets in town, and uh, you happen to have stumbled into said racket. Uh, they remind me of the mafia, where they're like they want to constantly milk money out of people, as, yeah. like however they can. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're actually you, you just talk playing to the, yakuza right now, so we just got to talk to the tea. Yeah, talk to the tea shop guy, and he he was like, "No, no, I pay my I pay my dues. I don't I don't need to worry about them. Sorry that you guys don't have that problem." Yeah, yeah. So I feel like eventually maybe they would, you know, try to kill somebody, but that's probably not any anything immediately that we got to worry about, I guess. Which makes them slightly less intimidating because usually uh. it's like, "Hey, don't pay you don't pay your debt. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know beat the shit out of you." And well, here, in this instance, it was like. Well, I mean, are you though? Because we're all like warriors, so. Here, here's the thing, right? I think that they. I mean, this is this is the thing that is funny about how D and D stories often go, where like a group of thugs show up at your house and you're like, "We're adventurers," and they're like, "We don't care," and then you kill them all. But this time it was like, "We're adventurers," and they're like, "We see that." We're gonna yeah, go. yeah. I did like that though. I, I, we're gonna go I find someone. Like... <laughs> we're gonna go find someone to pick on who doesn't know how to cast spells, 
Um, yeah. But I mean, if they if they like you know break the blacksmith's hands with a hammer or like take yeah, over yeah. her shop or something, uh, you're not getting that plate armor. So true. true. It is it is a problem that might affect you. Um, what do you? Uh, as far as I know, gonna, this is what like what are you gonna do? Where it's where the morning, go? right? It's the morning. Yeah, after. I mean, it's, yeah. it's like it's like like early yeah early afternoon. It's the brunching hour. You've you've just left the uh, the alley where the local. Uh, fortune teller was living in his little uh, wooden lean to, um, mm-hmm. right? And uh, yeah, we and also were out. we 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 intersect or intercepted uh, a raven that that I sent in some forgery for. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You you rolled a uh, you rolled a forgery check. Uh, I don't think you rolled very well. You're rolling pretty bad. I had a um, twenty three on deception though. What was that? Uh, that was something else. I think. Yeah, because the forgery. You, oh, yeah, because you were not. It was the next one. It was your um, sixteen, that uh, that was. Your the sixteen is pretty point. good, Adam. What the fuck, man? Well, I mean, yes, sixteen is pretty good, but you know that's fine. I rolled a thing. Some stuff happened. Anyway, you made a forgery. Okay, you sent so you it off or some shit. All right, all right. At the very least, it bought you that extra day. Um, and uh, yeah, and so you've you've just been uh, you've been uh, aligned with the uh, with the gods. You've 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 stepped out into the uh, into the market square, and uh, the uh, the early early afternoon sun is uh, coming down on you. Um, what are you gonna do? As as far uh, as Adam, I know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, is there any form of like law enforcement in this town, <laughs> like guards and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the way that. Hmm. Let's have you make a. Uh, you're, you're gonna. You're gonna have perceived some of this over time, but I'll, I'll give you information based on how much you were able to to notice about that. So you you call back on your memory and think like, okay, have I seen cops wandering around? What do I? What can you pick up from watching the street? Roll a roll a perception uh, check. Okay. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Every, Ooh, everyone. Asriel. Everyone. Asriel roll got a seven. A so you've been. Per- you've, You've been distracted, Azrael, maybe by by your new companions, by your your lack of mission. But the thing here is, uh, you 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 haven't noticed any armed soldiers around, or or like obvious um, guards, right? Like a, a town usually uh, should contain um, like guards to keep the keep the peace. But you haven't uh, you haven't seen any. Um, certainly, no one in no one in uniform. Well, what we know about this area is that it's not really controlled. If there are like law enforcement, I know this area, this section that we're in, correct me if I'm wrong, is controlled by this gang. Like it's mainly like they are the 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 law. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've they've got certain aspects of uh, of culture <laughs> in the lower the lower tier of uh, of the monastery town. Um, pretty much together. Um, yeah. but often the way these things go, um, is that like the criminal organization will just put pressure on the cops if there are any, but you haven't really seen them, uh, around. So, mm-hmm. so I think our, our, we'd either be heading back to our place. Cause I know that gang was supposed to come back and be like, Hey, we'll, we yeah, talked to were, the boss or, yeah, or they we're, were like, gonna go we're going to go talk. Cause the, you said, you said maybe we can, maybe we can work our way around this or maybe we can like do something mm-hmm. for you, uh, or whatever. Um, and then they said, "Yeah, we'll come back." And they 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 haven't yet. So you have uh, so you have a, you have a little time. You could either go and wait for them to show up, or you could seek them out, or you could do some more some more footwork to kind of figure out what the hell's going on in the 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 lower lower ward. So. What you guys thinking, Dan JP? Um, I think maybe we should ask around the local folk of like who's in charge down here. Like if there's some sort of Ask people if there's some sort of someone who's has more more control over things than other people down here besides this gang. <clears throat> you know, like if the the church or there's some guards or that just aren't very apparent. Maybe some of these monks are actually guards we don't know about or yeah. just ask around. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean that's that's on you guys. I can't really. That's not. Yeah. My no. Me, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I think if we're just standing around. around. I think if we're just standing around, Berg's just like. Where to now? My guess would be like, hmm, <clears throat> one of this town is any form of law enforcement or guards or something. I haven't noticed any. But let's ask someone if there that exists here. I guess I look around for someone that's someone nearby that I could ask, like if there's some sort of 
if there's any sort of guards around here or yeah i mean you're right. standing you're standing at the edge of the market district and so the the market is this big open area kind of at the bottom of the uh, of the monastery so the monastery we were, we were saying before like is built into a peak at the the top of the edge of the valley and it kind of scoops out into a bowl at the bottom where the lower tier is um, and uh, there are like houses, proper houses, and, and wooden structures all built in here. And then the middle, there is a uh, there's a big open area where the where the market takes place. And so people will come down from the monastery to buy things, and then go back up to their nicer houses up above. And then the people that live around here will will wander through the market. So the market is almost always, as long as it's open, it's always very busy. Um, so there's yeah a crowd of people all kind of going about their business. Uh, the market's been open for several hours. You can hear people shouting, uh, you know, hawking their wares. Uh, do you want to just like randomly go to the the nearest cart? Are you looking for someone in particular? Um, what are you What are you after, Azrael? Uh, I guess maybe he's like <laughs> one of the monk types. Looks like they would someone that looks knowledgeable, like someone that's in a monk outfit, or because <laughs> they seem to be like the prominent people in charge around here. Okay. Um, are you looking for a, a particular a monk of like any particular god, or are you, are you looking uh, for? If possible, maybe anyone. one of the, the god of like uh, Azure Vortex and her brother that order, maybe. Um, ah, the Hierophant. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, make a uh, make a religion check. Oh man, Dan's religion checks just on top of it lately, so this should go well. Twenty. Boom. Hey, hey. told you. Talk, talk like that every time. All you gotta do is just talk yeah. shit to your teammates, and they'll roll. Exactly. Well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. So you, uh, yeah, you're like, all right, I'm gonna go find a monk, and you like head out into the uh, into the the courtyard. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, you uh, you spot a uh, a monk in the the robes of the uh, of the hierophant, uh, simple gray robes. Um, they have a, a particular kind of hat that they wear, the sort of squarish like hat when they're not, um, you know, out doing monk stuff. Um, and he's carrying a, a large satchel, and he has a a, a younger uh, like an acolyte with him. Um, and he's he's currently paying for a basket of uh, persimmons from a, a, a fruit seller. Uh, and you, you spot this uh, this older guy. He's uh, he's human, um, probably in his like I don't know forties or fifties, early fifties. Um, and uh, his his apprentice is human as well. And the apprentice is currently like struggling to get the basket of persimmons up on his shoulder as the the monk is paying with uh, some silver coins from his his purse. Side um, note: I forgot what persimmons look like. They look like a uh, orange tomato. Yeah, they look like an orange tomato. I don't think I've ever mm -hmm. had one before. They're pretty I good. I don't know that I have had just... had one either. They look like tomato, though. Huh. What uh, oh, well, I, Sorry, go ahead. I'd walk up to him and be like, uh, excuse me, sir. I hate to bother you, but I'm new in town, and I had a few questions, if you wouldn't mind answering. He uh, he turns around, um, not not quickly, not startled. He moves with a, a, a fluidity uh, that befits a monk. So he, he turns to face you. Um, and are you? Do you make any effort to um, to hide your your nature at all? Like, you know, if if anybody is familiar with uh, with the, the Azamar, with the Tianchi, uh, and they look at you, they'd recognize uh, they'd recognize that you're not human, unless you make an effort to hide it, like you wear a, a hooded cloak or whatever. Do you, or are you just like walking I, around? Yeah, I don't really hide it at all. I don't have, feel that fear. Uh, sure. At least not right now. Okay. All right. So he uh, he turns to look at you, and he uh, he sees you, and for a second his his, uh, his his gray eyes flit back and forth between your your companions and then fall back to you, and he kind of smiles slightly, um, and uh, and he he bows uh, and uh, and says, uh, "Honored stranger, is there something that I can do for you?" And well, you can see him like he's he. He's, this guy's very sharp. He's taking in the measure of you. Like, he's speaking slowly and, like, watching you very carefully. Hmm. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Azrael. Uh, may I know your name? He, uh, he smiles and, uh, and he says, um, <laughs> he says, would that I had a name to give to you, Tianxi, but I have given it up for a time as part of the strictures of my order. Are you familiar oh, yes. with the Hierophant? Oh, I am so sorry. I had forgotten that you take this vow to become no one for a while. I he, apologize. Uh, he nods. There is no reason <clears throat> to apologize. You could not have known. 
and he, he turns to look at uh, at Berg, I guess, next. And Berg, you, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if you notice necessarily. Um, maybe you do. Maybe it's something you're, you're sensitive to. But I would say that Azrael notices his eyes just flick to your wrist for a second before returning to your face very, very subtly. Um, yeah. And he gives you he gives you a bow. But again, <clears throat> Azrael, you notice it's much less formal and much less respectful. Not in a, like an insulting way, but this guy's very aware of the of the sort of power structure in the conversation. So he just like nods slightly to you, Berg. Uh, yeah, I think at this point Berg's pretty used to most people like regarding his wrist, and he's just like, no, nah, whatever. Like, <laughs> if we get to that and I have to dis- you know, talk about it, I will. But for now, Berg just stays silent and just looks right back at him. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, yeah, so he, he nods to you. You don't say anything, um, and then he looks at he looks at you, uh, Black Gale, and doesn't seem to know what. To do like he doesn't want to. You can sense you sense a bit of embarrassment that he doesn't know whether you're like a pet or a person or. Right. Um, I'm I'm standing there and I turn to Azrael and look awkwardly and then turn back to him and look awkwardly, and then in Azrael's voice just say I'm new in town. <laughs> and he he laughs and he's like, what a delight, huh? Well. Azrael, uh, it's been some time since I have spoken with one of your kind. It would do me a great honor if you would join my apprentice and I for tea. And he, he gestures, and you can see there's a, a tea shop nearby. Well, that that's very gracious of you. I, I, as long as my companions can come with me. Uh, he, yeah, he nods. He says, of course, of course. Yes, I. that would be a great time to discuss a few things with you. Sure, okay. So we 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 wipe to the inside of a a, a fairly quiet uh, tea shop. Um, there are a bunch of red lacquered wooden tables set out in a, a central uh, area. Uh, there are the family of the owner um, serving tea to the various people at the at the tables. There's maybe a dozen people in here. It's very quiet except for the sound of bird song. Uh, there are uh, little bird cages hanging over every table, and the birds in them are, are chirping and singing in the light that's coming through the window. Um, and so you're all around a, a table, and, and there is a, uh, there's a servant pouring, um, pouring you tea from an, an iron uh, teapot, uh, which he then sets in the center of the table. Um, the apprentice uh, is really bored and trying really hard not to seem bored um, and is distracted by a housefly that's like buzzing around the table. Um, but the monk, uh, the, the, the hierophant monk, uh, is paying very close attention to everything that you're saying, Azrael particularly, but everyone at the table. He's being very, uh, very attentive. I don't think Gail is participating much in the conversation. He's constantly looking back uh, at all the birds caged around him and very confused. Uh, mm-hmm. Perhaps even like throughout the conversation, I might just stand up and walk over to some of the cages and try to open them. <laughs> <laughs> Has your character ever like drank tea before? Does he even know what to do with the cup? I think cups are definitely used, but I don't know if like he understands that tea is a something to like have a conversation around i wonder i wonder if kinku would use cups because birds don't like they you dip your beak in the it's probably like everything's like a house or like a like a house bath or like a house watering hole (laughs) or if it was cups it'd be like much larger ones that they'd be long and long and thin, like fluted right yeah yeah yeah, i guess so because you'd have to dip your beak into it you're like one of those little birds Mm. like yeah yeah probably not then i'm probably very confused when a cup is put down in front of me why it's so tiny or something like that, you know? Right, right. Uh, but I'm severely distracted, so I don't even <laughs> consider it a thing. I'm just worrying about the birds in the cages. And these are like your, like, an- like no, I don't want to say answers, but like children almost just like fucking caged up. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like little half orcs just sitting in uh, <laughs> some cages for. <laughs> Cool. The next time, the next time you're in a bar, I'll describe how there are monkeys in cages over every table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the uh, yeah, so the monk uh, he he seems to be interested in like asking asking you questions, uh, Asriel. So he, you know he I think he's probably you're in the as we fade in he's in the middle of asking you. Um, so how is it that you came to the monastery? We see your kind so rarely here. Surely there must be more interesting places in the world for you to be. Well, uh, I just go where I'm taken. I don't really have a place or a purpose right now. I'm just sort of wandering and i've come across your town and i'll be here for as long as i as i have to be he uh, he nods uh, he says i would find that terribly vexing if i were you no certainty in my life but 
I am not you. My destiny perhaps is a more rooted one. And your friends, and he looks to Berg, <clears throat> are they bound to your wandering as well? Currently, they're just, they happen to be traveling with me, but they have no co- ties or connections to me directly right now. And I have no ties with them for now. Just sort of trying to find my place in life. Are we not in our own way all tied together by the threads of fate, Azrael? Like this conversation. Like this conversation, did you not wander into my story as I did to yours? That is very true, my friend. Ask him if he knows anything. In front of him, he's asking this. Yeah, yeah. He he smiles and he looks over at you and uh, and he says, "I, I know many things, friend. I just motion towards Azrael, like, you're better with words. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Berg, he's he's a simple man, but he's a very, very important man. He's, I have a feeling there's more to this man, this half-orc, than meets the eye. Like I apologize if he was rude to you. He shakes his head. <laughs> no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm too old to be startled by rudeness. It's fine. Your manners are strange, but I've encountered stranger. I I just came into town, as I said, and I had some questions about this area, if you wouldn't mind answering. Of course. Is there any sort of government or law enforcement around here? He, uh, he steeples his fingers and uh, sort of stares thoughtfully into his tea, you know, wisps of steam rising from it. He seems to think for a moment uh, and, then, and then looks up at you and uh, he says, it's a complicated question. The monastery is in many ways several towns separated by height, separated by culture. Down here at the bottom of the mountain, in the shadow of the monastery, there are organizations with power, but... This is a religious place, and in the Court of Coins, religion and state are separated strongly, as are the precepts. But uh, there are those in power, but it all flows from above. You're familiar with the abbot, I presume. I've heard stories of him. Powerful man. Old. Strong. Blessed by the fountain, they say. Is it? possible to meet with him (laughs) only if you're very rich or very influential though and he kind of gives you a look and scratches his chin he says uh you do have the advantage of being uh, an obvious outsider though if you hope to meet him as equals best not i think to be a curiosity that's true i've heard many things about him both good and bad Why is it that you're curious about this? Uh, Are you planning on robbing a bank? And he kind of chuckles. Money does not interest me. I have a greater purpose in life. Something was taken from me, and I can't get it back. So I will do my best to avenge what was taken from me. Mm. Tian Shi on a quest of vengeance. The start of a good story, I think. Hopefully one with a good ending. But time will tell. And so while the two of you are talking, the the apprentice is just like staring at this fly that's like buzzing around. And the monk, without breaking eye contact with you, just like reaches out and grabs the fly out of the air and just holds his hand open. And the fly's dead in his palm. And his apprentice just stares at it for a second. And the monk just drops it in his apprentice's tea. (laughs) <laughs> He's the, whole thing, you, that bitch. the whole thing happens without him breaking eye contact he just like snaps <laughs> out and grabs it uh, and then it's like quiet you can't hear the buzzing anymore and the, the kid is just looking at this fly floating in his tea I think Berg after seeing that just like kind of chuckles and like <laughs> <clears throat> yeah I, I'm not I'm no I stand up from the table at this point I'm walking over to these cages and just investigating okay. the birds I'm not doing sure. anything you, are... I'm just sitting there if they're chirping at me, I chirp back at them in the same manner. Do you, do you just walk over to like an empty an empty table? 
No, I'm standing in front of the cages. I'm not even. Yeah, so the so each each table each um, table has, has a different a, cage. In the has center. a cage hanging over it. Yeah, so they oh, each has okay. each have their own little bird. Yeah, I'll just walk over to an empty table, or or maybe I stand up at the, I stand up at the one that we're at, and yeah, just stare okay. directly at the bird in front of us. Sure. Yeah, it's a little uh, it's a little finch. Uh, it's like brown and red, um, and it, it's just kind of hopping around. It's got a little like swing uh, in there, and it yeah it, it hops up to the front of the cage and like chirps at you and tilts its head. Yeah, I do the the same tilting of head <laughs> okay. and sure. continue to, to mimic the bird as okay. the conversation continues. Okay. Tell me, uh, if I was having trouble with, let's say, a certain group of people down here, is there someone in the town above that could help me perhaps stop those people from down here from harming us? I'm afraid you have things upside down, Tianchi. Help does not flow that way. Those below help those above. If you have a problem down here, best deal with it yourself. Hmm, and if I you're see. rich enough to get help from above, you shouldn't be down here in the first place. I see. So there is no one above that controls what happens down here. Besides mm. the abbot, of course. <laughs> it's not about not controlling. It's simply about priority. Uh, the and he like looks around and uh, he says the uh, the twelvefold thirsty devils run this place, and it's said they have ties direct to the abbot through channels above, but you won't get any help from up there. Even if you were to find whoever is pulling their strings, they wouldn't admit to it. Improper did say, behavior. Did you say twelve full devils? Twelvefold thirsty devils. Oh, twelvefold. Okay. Twelve full thirsty devils. The name of the gang. Yeah. Just writing that down. It's a, it's a kind of neat gang name, I guess. Yeah, um, and so he, um, yeah, he says uh, it is the unfortunate way of things. Once you reach the bottom, <laughs> it's much harder to climb up without. And I know heaven has no use for gold, but we're on earth, Tianchi, and on earth, gold is what buys you influence. I have noticed this. Tell me. Is there anyone down here that the devils don't touch or too af or are too afraid to touch? Hmm. Well, the devils are a religious organization, and it's in scripture from the fountain itself that we do not conflict with one another. Their leader meets with the council of monks, as is his position. He is as much a part of the religious structure here as any of us it's confusing i know when so often these things are separated but they are a legitimate church they are behaving within the structures of their beliefs so folks with a religion are still thugs he nods yes a good point but thugs given purpose by heaven there is room in this creation for everyone even layabouts like the thirsty devils so what you're telling me is that each religious faction down here pretty much steers clear of each other and lets each other exist in its own way yes a microcosm of the world at large so let's take for example let's say a certain merchant belonged to a certain religious order would they be untouchable by a different order? It would depend on the arrangement of the order with the devils. Some are closer, some not so much. As you can imagine, temperance, judgment, they don't like the devils much, but death. And then he pauses for a second, he swallows hard and like looks like at the door for some reason, and then back to you and he says, um, well... We won't speak of the devil's other allies. Bad that's, luck. That's fine. More interested in the pe I'm more interested in what what religions would the devil steer clear of? They're bold here. They have no true enemies. They are at the top of the food chain, at least in the gutter. 
if you are looking to make allies against them, and it's your funeral, <laughs> but uh, judgment or temperance would be a good place to begin. But be careful. They have ears everywhere. And he looks over, and you can see, like, at the bar, there's a, there's a woman... Uh, dressed in black, like monk's robes, with a she's got her hat like leaned up against the bar, and she's sipping tea. And she like you, you look over and you catch her like looking at you, and she turns away. Mm. Yes, well, you see, I have no ill will towards these devils. I, in fact, I respect them. It's just that we've kind of they've kind of crossed my path, and just want to find the most peaceful solution out of it. I would never want to directly influence. The devils, and I glance back at the woman. Yeah, just realizing he, uh, that I'm being listened to. Yeah, he says, um, "Well, perhaps if you could gain an audience with Grasping Hands, their leader. He's a busy man, but uh, and he, he like kind of gives you a, a once over and says, but I think if you could part with some of the gold you're not so fond of, you might be able to grease the wheels, find your way into his company.' I see." Gold moves all down here, it seems. He nods. As with the rest of the world, Tianqi, you have not been here long, have you? Not long enough, it seems. He, uh, he smiles. I don't know whether to wish you a long visit or a short one. It would be sad to see a being of your light corrupted by the base nature of the world. Well, I've... My light isn't so pure anymore, but... I try to do the best I can. Thank you just, so much for your time. While you're saying that, Berg just grabs his tea and goes, "Let's go." So the the kid the kid has been staring at his tea, which is now like cooled to to like drinkable temperature, and he's like holding it. And he's looking at his dead fly in it. And Berg, yeah, you you start to drink, and uh, and he turns uh, and says in common, uh, and he says, "Do you not like your tea? It is impolite." And and the kid like starts to like look at it like he's like am I supposed to and then the keeper just puts his the monk puts his hand on the bottom of the tea and just tips it up and the kid like drinks the whole thing and like drinks the fly like swallows hard and kind of blinks and like makes a grossed out face and uh, and then he uh, he stands he's finished his tea uh, and the, the monk stands when you do Berg and then so does the the apprentice like it's you're signaling like okay conversation's over we're done I think when they all stand I snap out of the mimicry with the smaller bird. And realize that we're leaving. Um, can I make a quick head count of all the birds in cages here? Uh, sure. Yeah, there's like there's probably a dozen. Okay. And then does this place have a name? Um, probably not. No. Okay. It's probably just like the tea shop in the market. Like not the, there aren't enough of these kinds of places that anyone would need it. There's a specific old name. man tea shop and this one. Well, the old man sells tea. This is a like a tea house. Ah, I see. I see. He's, what, he's more of a sh yeah. I got gotcha. you. What would I try to note down if I wanted <clears> to <throat> send a uh, bird here with a message later? Oh yeah. I mean, you you would know how to do that. Yeah, okay. you'd know where to to send the the message. Yeah. Great. I'm thinking. I'm getting like Robin Hood <laughs> flashbacks right now. <laughs> Free them all. <laughs> I just don't understand why, but now I do. It's it's for other people's amusement. Uh, and I'm not down with that, so I'll I'll fix it my own way. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. All yeah. Right, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I think we're moving back towards. If we're trying to gain uh, an audience, then with the dude, I guess we'd be heading back towards. Our before place. we leave, uh, oh. I I, I want to walk over to the woman that was looking at us. Uh yeah 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 sure. And it's yeah, like she's. she's She's pretty in, pretty indistinct. Uh, <laughs> just wearing, uh, yeah, wearing black like monks' uh, robes and sandals. Um, she's got a, a cup of tea sitting in front of her that uh, looks like it. There's nothing like there's nothing in it. And it looks like it's been dry for some time. So I walk up to her and I'm like, "Take me to Grasping Hands now." <laughs> she she grins and looks at you and she's got like one uh, one gold tooth and then a bunch of other teeth that are like quite stained. And she, she kind of leans back, and she's like, I'm sorry, what? You heard me. You heard everything that I said. Take me to grasping hands now. I start laughing like a child to really <laughs> embellish the moment here. Yeah, she looks around, and she, she kind of like 
hops out of her chair or off the stool and kind of like kicks it aside and it like slides across the floor with a, a, a screech. And she, she hikes her like sword belt up. You know, she has these two like curved swords on her belt. And uh, she says, uh, she says, um, I don't care where you come from. You can't talk to me like that. Don't you know who I am? No. I know who care. you are. You are the woman about to take me to grasping hands right now. <laughs> Damn, that Make- sounds like intimidation check. <laughs> yeah, that sure sounds like an intimidation check. Let's let's see if you're intimidating. Right. She's trying to flex on us. Come on now. Oh, oh. shit. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Take me to grasping uh, hands right now. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it. Okay. <laughs> <After four laughs> <minutes. laughs> so you, uh, yeah, so you're you're like up in her face. Like, Take me to grasping hands now, and uh, I think she punches you in the chest. Um, so let me let me see how how hard she hits you here. She's she's not like trying to not kill people. you, punch you. Yeah. She wants to like knock you down, basically, or mm-hmm. push you out of the way. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, what's your armor class? Uh, 16 right now. Okay. All right. This could be very embarrassing. Perhaps. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> so she, she hits you in the chest. Uh, you take uh, some damage, and then I need you to make a save. Uh, one sec. Okay, you take six damage. Jesus. Um, and I need you to make hard. a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, please. She's a monk. No. Oh, okay. nails it. All right. Nailed it. So you stagger. You stagger back like a couple of steps, but you don't fall. Um, but yeah, basically she just kind of like does a, a quick maneuver and then punches you hard in the sternum. You stagger back. You can feel it like it's you're, you're having a hard time. It knocks the wind out of you a little bit. Uh, and then she just like looks down her fist at you and then like drops into a, a defensive pose. And uh, and she says uh, uh, she says you do not make demands of the golden fist princess. And then she like snaps into a like I'm gonna punch you again like pose. <laughs> uh, what what is what is Berg? I think Berg reacts. Uh, actually, I think Berg tries to just grapple her if he can. Like laugh right as she punches him. Like right in that moment, he tries to like get around her. I'll roll whatever I have to to do that, but. Okay. Maybe that didn't even happen. I don't know. Like her saying that. Uh, yeah. So she well, she she punches him, and then she says that real quick, and then you want yeah, yeah, sure, sure. to grab her. Yeah, like while she's focused on him, Berg, like in that same moment that all this is happening, he tries to get behind her and like grab her, uh, you know, like tie up her hands. A, yeah, make an athletics check. We'll just we'll do sure. an opposition. <clears throat> and boop. Okay. Sixteen so versus an check. Twenty-one. Okay. okay. Damn. So okay. You, you, you lunge for her, and I think you like swipe her her like teacup and stuff off the table because she's done a like a backflip and is standing on the bar now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she like yeah crouches down and uh, she looks at the three of you and she's like one on three that's hardly fair. And she looks back at you as you're like, you want to fight or are you gonna back the fuck off? <laughs> I said, oh I'm sorry. I meant please take me to him now. <laughs> make a persuade. Make a persuade check. Okay. Adam's at least trying think- to help us here. Oh my god! But we're just not making the rolls. <laughs> All right, I think I'll I'll I'll, I'll let you. Uh, you can you can you can tell this. So you're not being obsequious enough. There was a good start. She like grins a little. That she's like, haha. Now you're saying please. But like you're really gonna have to like, you know, play into how tough and cool she thinks she is if you want her to to go along with you. Um, but she doesn't immediately like attack you or anything. So she's just like kind of crouched on the on the thing. And like I think the the guy that owns the tea shop has like run out into the back. And he's yeah. like he doesn't want to have anything anything to do with this. Uh, and the the rest of the tea shop is everybody's like kind of looking over at you. I say I say to her, you see, I'm asking you because I need someone. Bleh, sorry, grasping hands is a very mysterious and hard man to get to and only the most strongest and fearsome of warriors could ever get an audience with him i just thought you might be capable of that and uh she grins uh she grins at you and like hops down from the bar she's still like very tense like you can you can sense that she's she's still ready to to spring uh and she she folds her arms over her chest and she says what business do you have with the boss 
And that's when Berg punches her in the face. And I'm just kidding. Yeah, you can if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to punch her in the face, you can. He's a man no. of bargains, and I have a bargain for for him. She uh, she says, uh, and what are you going to do to make it worth my while to risk his displeasure, interrupting him? I will have to tell him how fierce of a fighter you are and how blessed he is to have such an amazing warrior at his disposal. He, uh, she, she laughs and she's like, ha, <clears throat> grasping fist already, grasping hands already knows how strong I am. It's why I'm his second lieutenant, fool. I want money. She like puts her hands up. You have it, obviously. Look at the three of you. Mm. you really? I thought a strong warrior would think wouldn't care about such trivial things. I thought the honor of taking someone from heaven there alone would be worthy enough. Ha! Heaven! I spit on heaven! I piss in the fountain! Well, you we're probably fighting. what? <laughs> you what? She laughs and she's like, I don't care where you're from. You could be from a toilet in the Court of Wands for all I care. Pay me, I'll take you to the boss. Did Otherwise... you just insult the fountain? <laughs> the <Madam>. fountain! <laughs> and that's when I burst and activate my, my holy ability and uh, wings sprout from my back and uh, my eyes start glowing with the uh, holy rage. And I'm just like, how dare you? <laughs> awesome. So does your, uh, does your ability have... Um... Does it have any particular like effect? What does yours do? I forget which, Mine which one is, you are. Um, it does AOE damage around me if um, if I want, and okay. then uh, it doesn't get me flying or anything, but it just like just very glowy, and I can deal extra dam radiant. Right, damage. that's right. Yeah, you're the you're a. Uh, He's the protector, I think. Mm -hmm. It's the radiant consumption for one minute. Like all creatures take uh, radiant damage equal to half my level rounded up each turn. Uh, deal extra radiant damage equal. Uh, you go to your level once. Okay. Well, let's 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 cut to let's cut to break there on you being like Brah, and like your wings sprouting going through super your back. Sand. And, yeah, light <laughs> bursting out of you, and then we'll we'll take a break here, and we'll find out what happens when we when we get back. Great. All right, let's take a break, like we just said, and we'll find out what happens when we get back. Exactly what Adam just said. I'm just gonna steal that line because I am a bird that mimics <laughs> other people. We'll see you in just a sec.